All right, guys, short video on injector control testing on a 5-liter Mustang. This is a proper back probe. It's just a somewhat flexible wire. Some are a little more fixed than these ones. These are nice and flexible. I get these from Pomona, which is a part of the Fluke company. These make really good back probes. They're a little bit more money than some, but they are really nice. And so this end has a 4 millimeter banana jack designed to go into most multimeters. This end is a flexible, bendable, thin metal probe. So we're going to go down to an injector, and on a 5 liter, to give you some orientation here, the first two injectors on the passenger side, injectors number 1 and 2, are the only ones that are really very accessible. On this car, injector number 2, right here in front of the, uh, the throttle body area, is the most accessible. So when you want to test injectors, there's going to be a power all the time with the key on, 12 volt power all the time with the key on, and then the other wire is going to be a ground. That ground is going to run to the computer. When the computer wants to turn the injector on, the power is already going to be there, and the computer is going to supply the ground for about two or three thousandths of a second at a time. Short period. That's called pulse width. So now, which wires do we want to test? Well. What's going to happen is every injector connector is going to have a red wire and then some other color wire. Because all of these eight injectors have a red wire going into it, I know that the power supply is going to be this red wire. The fact that it's red has nothing to do with that, although they are oftentimes red, they're not always red. But any time you see the same color wire go into lots of different injectors, see that one there, it's red and, I don't know, some kind of a tan. This one is red and some other kind of a tan, maybe tan with a white stripe. They're all going to be a different color on the control wire, but on the, uh, on the power wire, they're all going to be the same red wire coming from the harness. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we're not even going to bother with testing for injector power, and I'll show you why in a minute. We're going to go straight to the injector ground wire, which is the wire that's not common in color, that's unique per injector. We're going to slide this back probe let me get a good shot of that for you. We're going to take this little thin wire. You could use a paper clip if you absolutely had to. We're going to slide this back probe right in straight down along the side of this control wire. And so we're not ramming it through, although it's pretty flexible. We're just trying to touch the side of that terminal. And we'll know if we succeeded if we do this part right. So for this test, we're, we could use a Noid light and just plug it in there, but who needs that? All we need is a $9, $10 LED test light from Amazon. By LED, this is what I mean. They got one light emitting diode in the middle of it, and that's what makes it an LED, te LED test light. These type of test lights only draw maybe 20 milliamps compared to an incandescent test light that draws about 200 milliamps. So these don't take hardly any power at all, and you got to be careful how you use them a little bit. Um, they are not good for trying to control something, but they are good for trying to see if you have a signal without interrupting or being involved in that signal. So what we do is we take our test light, and I have clamped it here to the strut tower bolt. That is a great spot to do that on 5-liter cars. So... The ground clamp goes to the goes to the strut tower bolt. My test light, I already have the key on by the way. My test light, I'm just gonna set it down into my back probe. Maybe give it a little push so it's got a little stability to be in there. This is not the right tool for that, don't get me wrong. I'm just shoving it in there because I know it'll work. Because the shaft on this test light is pretty close to the four millimeters size of the back probe. The four millimeters banana jack, which is what this is, that female banana jack right there, is the industry standard for uh, multimeters. So, we've now got a red LED shining up over there, and it's shining all the time. So what's happening is 12 volts is coming from the engine harness because the key is on through the red wire into the injector. It's winding around those windings, which are not being turned on at the moment, and coming out the other side to this wire that we're touching on, which is the ground slash control wire. So now what I'm looking at is the power going to the injector in the red wire, winding through the injector and coming out the other side. Now what's gonna happen is as soon as I try to start the car, the computer should ground that and pulse it 
it's a pulsed ground. So it's going to be not grounded most of the time, but every couple of thousandths of a second, it's going to have a little bit of a ground. Or rather, the ground's going to last a couple thousandths of a second. Now, I have unplugged the computer in this car, so it is not going to start. There is no fuel control. There is only power going here. And when I crank the car, what you're going to see is a small variation in flickering of the light, but that's only because the battery voltage is varying during the cranking because the starter draws high amperage. You're not going to see any actual control here on this. Ready? Here we go. All right, if this car were healthy and I were letting it start right now, that test light would be flickering while it's cranking. The fact that this test light is solid, lit up all the time, tells me two things. First, it tells me the power is getting to the injector and it's going through the windings, which means the injector windings aren't broke. And it's coming out the other side. And it also tells me we're not getting ground signal from the computer. We call that injector pulse. We're not getting injector pulse. We're only getting injector power. So because that red light is not flickering while I'm cranking it, the computer is not sending a ground pulse to the injector to tell it to turn on and off. And so when we, uh, we want to look and see what we're missing with a car that doesn't run. Hey, man, my 5 liter doesn't run. I have no stinking idea what it could be. All right, here's the, 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 the everything you need all in one shot. We need a incandescent test light set into coil negative. It's going to light up for the same reason the injector lit up. We need a inline spark tester to the coil wire, which is the center one in the cap. And we need a LED test light tapped into the injector. Now, don't shove the tip of the LED test light in there because that's like caveman stuff. You need to use a real back probe of some sort. Sometimes you can use a T-pin like this guy and insert that into that injector wire. But when you do that, then somebody's actually got to be there to hold that. And since I'm doing this by myself, I just opted to lean the light into the back probe I had instead so I could do it one-handed or no-handed. All right, so now that we have that, when I crank this over, I can be, with these three tools in place, it costs 30 bucks, I can be testing for injector pulse, which is computer control of fuel. I can be testing for coil control, which is ignition module, coil output, which is spark here. And that tests three majorly important things, and I'll get to the other one, the PIP sensor, in the next video. So I'm gonna crank this, and I'm gonna watch how each one of these works. There, with that way too long of a crank on this almost dead battery, I've shown you guys how to test pretty much everything to figure out why your car doesn't run. There's only two things we haven't tested so far. That is the PIP signal coming out of the distributor, which I really don't need to test because we had a blinking light over here, which means the PIP signal is actually good. And then fuel pressure, which uh, you need a fuel pressure gauge to test that. So that's kind of the easy way to test a whole bunch of stuff, guys.